In this video, we're going to be breaking down Saquon Barkley's training. Let's get straight to it. This is a good warm up, right? So leg kicks, you can do side to side, get some extra rotation of hip, internal rotation of hip. You can do front forward, get some hip flexor work, some hip extension work. Overall, pretty good. Uh, nothing too bad. So let's get straight into this. All right. Uh, I'm going to slow down a lot because it's not going to show a full workout. Either way, try bar deadlift. Uh, lifting about 300 to 400 pounds probably. Could be even more. I don't know. Good for developing max strength and is very good for NFL players and basketball players because usually they're longer limbed. So a barbell doesn't really feel that good on their back and won't really have high transfer. But a trap bar deadlift usually has very high transfer to vertical force and even horizontal force. So trap bar deadlifts are great. Uh, we have posture drills. So teaching your body how to have a straight line from the top of your head to your ankle and then landing on your center mass is huge for uh, improving your sprint speed. Straight leg bounds are great for developing horizontal force and also teach your body how to land under your center mass and propel your body forward, not just up, right? A lot of people think, oh, you're just producing force down. You're producing force down and back. There's a huge difference. So straight leg bounds are a great way to teach that. Then we got some build up sprints. Great for developing max velocity sprint, especially if it's a flying 10. If it's time, not bad. Um, I think we got wicked sprints today. So it looks like a max velocity day. It makes sense why they're doing the pole stuff. We will see. So. Building up from the codes, yep, and wickets. So these wickets are usually, there's some charts, right? You can follow some charts, but usually the distance between every wicket, you can use a shoe, a wicket, or a tall wicket, right? So a shoe is the same thing as a short wicket. A short wicket is good for one foot jumpers and max velocity sprinting. Tall wickets are good for acceleration and two foot jumpers, right? Because you're gonna spend more time on the ground when the wickets are taller, so you can cover more distance vertically. So that'll be more uh, attributed to acceleration, but short wickets are obviously good. You want them to either be breakable or upside down. That way you're not falling and getting ankle sprain. And then the distance, there's charts on there, but you can do usually about three feet to two and a half feet. The faster you get, the more distance you need, right? And then you want it to be the way where when you're landing in between the wickets, you're landing under your center of mass, pretty much in this position, right? Straight leg, straight line, pretty much to, to the ankle, right? Straight line from the head, straight down to the ankle, good position have your chest forward, right? Get that heart forward and then spread as fast as possible land on your center mass. Overall, pretty good, right? So we'll get straight to the next exercise. Arizona. Okay, glute ham raises are great for developing glute extension and glute strength, right? You're also getting a lot of isometric exposure to the hamstring, which is really important for one foot jumping and also uh, max velocity sprinting. So you're getting that isometric hold and then you're letting the glute stretch and contract without putting a lot of load in other areas you don't need to go do, especially if you struggle with like hip thrust. If the hip thrust doesn't feel good to you, I think the next best option is a glute ham race. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, a glute ham race, especially a single leg glute ham race with bands and dumbbells and all those type of different ways to like load up the, the movement is probably the best exercise for your glutes. And we know glutes are really important for max velocity sprinting and accessory acceleration, developing that horizontal force, right? So next exercise here is going to be trap bar deadlift. We talked about this for loading. This is about 300 pounds. I say accelerated strength is the best way to load up a trap bar deadlift. Accelerated strength means you're lifting between 60 to 75% of your one rep max, right? So you're trying to produce force fast. It's called strength speed, produce uh, lift heavy weight fast. So yeah. All right, you can do max strength, uh, max strength, which is like 90 to 100% of your one rep max. But usually the ground, uh, the contraction velocity of that is too slow, right? Which isn't very transferable. But accelerated strength is usually around maybe 0. 0.6 to you know 1.0 seconds of contracting and producing force into the ground to get the trap bar up. That's more transferable to sprinting than a three second you know one rep max or something like that, right? The track here, uh, we already saw the wickets, so it might be another set of wickets, but we'll see. Uh oh, flying tens. So how you do a flying ten is one of the best exercises to improve your max velocity. I do this in the speed academy all the time, about four to six sets of 10 meter flies. You build up for about 10 to 20 meters slowly, kind of like a jog and start building up speed slowly more and more and more. Then you hit the cone or you hit these laser timers and you sprint as fast as possible for 10 meters. The best exercise to improve your max velocity sprinting, right? So your ability to hawk someone down this is the best exercise. There is no question. It's, it's always time and true. All the top coaches do it. it is the best way to improve max velocity sprint, right? There is a research study that shows that the fastest sprinters in the world on average have thicker thighs. So bigger quads and hamstrings than the average human, right? I forgot the percentage of how much bigger, but on average, the bigger your quads and hamstrings are, the faster you are. Um, relative to body weight, right? So you can't be just huge, massive thighs that 
you have to be fat to get, you know, they need to be muscle, right? So it needs to be lean body mass. And if that's bigger than the average human, you're probably going to have a higher chance of being faster, right? But we also know that there's athletes like Matthew Bowling and the guy from LSU who have very small thighs, very small legs, and they're very fast because sprinting is a fast ground contact time sport, which means you're producing a lot of force from the tendon, not from muscles, right? So sprinting is not a muscular force sport. It is a tendon sport. You're store and releasing, store and releasing, producing force in 0.1 to 0.2 seconds, right? Even faster sometimes. So it's just some food for thought. That's all. And even for the skinnier guys, they probably still have pretty big thighs relative to their body weight. All right, straight into it. I'm just going to pause a bunch because I think this is more of a motivation workout, but I can still break down everything just so we kind of get some insight, right? So this is acceleration sprints. Racing someone in your sprints is the best way to get faster, right? That is the number one exercise to get faster is racing someone that is equivalent or a little bit faster than you when it comes to sprinting. So these are short sprints, zero to 20 yards is all you're going to see in football. And even in acceleration when it comes to track and field or basketball, you really should be just sprinting to improve raw speed, zero to 40 yards. Nowhere above 40 yards because you do not want to be sprinting for longer than six seconds because then you're not tapping into that anaerobic power right you're gonna start getting into the aerobic power or anaer anaerobic endurance you don't really want to play with that so try to keep your sprints zero to 20 honestly is the sweet spot because a lot of people start leaking force and they start over striding after 20 yards so you're getting peak forces from zero to 10 to 20 so just stay between that 20 yards it's just it's really simple right it's easy to program just keep it like that right here is a i don't know what's going on here this is like a horizontal row um you're getting more bicep activation because it's supinated grips and then he's kind of rowing. It's called an inverted row in basketball, at least, where you use like the barbell and you kind of row backwards. So it's getting a little more lat, a little more bicep. And yeah, so that's all. And then he's using like some type of like assisted resisted type of thing where he's like um, on the eccentric, he's putting on the weight and then on the concentric, he lifts off the weight. So it's easier on the concentric, but then you're getting more eccentric overload, which is more muscular damage to the upper body. Right. So that's why he's so huge. Um, a lot of research recently, too, is showing that eccentrics are probably the best way to develop muscle, right? So slow eccentrics to extreme ranges of motion, so full range of motion. is probably the best way to build muscle, so that's probably why his upper body is so huge. Now, these are lateral raises for your post delt. If you want more post delt activation, go to 45 degree angle instead of laterally, right? So you want to go slightly 45 degrees, and it's not the same thing at the end of the day. It's just small details. Uh, still good lateral or post delts are really important for basketball and football players because a lot of the times we're sitting here and we start leaning forward and this post delt gets really under underused so uh really important All right incline chest press one of the best ways to improve your chest it's good for pressing in football pressing in basketball especially when it's dumbbell I'll avoid the barbell just stick to dumbbells call it a day crack it out right here it looks like a a wrist curl with band so uh more tension at the top so harder up here I'm not really sure exactly what the movie is going for. I think it's just like a bicep curl. So cool, right? I don't really know what he's going for here. So these are band assisted pull ups or no band resisted pull ups. So more tension at the top. Um, he's doing a supinated grip, probably easier on his shoulders, but also gets more bicep too. A lot of lat here. Uh, yeah, that's all. So now here, this is actually pretty interesting, right? So I think he's trying to force internal rotation. So it's forcing the post delt to work because you're trying to keep your uh, your elbow from internally rotating or your shoulder from internally rotating. You're trying to maintain this position of this post, you know, this strong athletic position, which could be really important for football for not getting pushed off your thingy. Uh, and then you're using kettlebell for more instability, so you can get the shoulder to activate a little bit more of the it, the, the intrinsic muscles in the shoulder. And you just press it overhead, right? Doing some pulse reps, or maybe I think he's actually just trying to hold it, right? So a lot, of, it's just a stability exercise for shoulder health, right? Uh, which can be very important for football because you're getting pushed off your balance a lot. So you need some good shoulder stability. All right, next exercise right here is band resistant push-ups. One of the best ways to develop the chest, the triceps, uh, develop that pushing motion. A lot of people can get a lot from push-ups. You really don't need to be going into barbell work until you got your push-up form down. You can do 20 to 30 push-ups with bands, with weighted vests. Once you kind of like, okay, I can't keep loading up the push-ups, then go to dumbbells. Craig, for athletes, right? For athletes. I'm not talking about for bodybuilders. But we're talking about athletes right here. Then get to the dumbbells, right? Then you can get to the dumbbells, but you don't have to, you know, rush the process, right? I see people, you know, their first day training in the gym, they're doing barbells. Dude, go do push-ups for three years and get your push-ups down. Then go to the, to the dumbbells. Then go to the barbell, right? 
like earn it don't just do it off rip yeah so i think i am right here this is like some some more resistance on the eccentric and then he's just pushing up i actually don't even think he's pulling away for the concentric he's just making it he's just loading up the the inverter row right so we already saw this you know resistant pull-ups resistant rows resistant pushes right here's some mobility stuff this is some really good like flow state work to kind of get some more hip flexion hip internal rotation external rotation is a good mobility exercise right um overall really good this is sprint into uh the brakes right so you sprint as fast as possible for five yards and then stop your body is one of the best ways to develop your deceleration a lot of people do stationary deceleration work which is important for beginners but the second you become an advanced athlete like saquon barkley or any of these nfl players uh like odell beckham who's also in this video as well you want to sprint and then stop add in horizontal momentum try to stop yourself as fast as possible is one of the best ways to build your deceleration brakes right so maybe they're not going 100 percent here they're kind of look like they're bullshitting it but that's okay right and that, and that might not even be the exercise that they're trying it might be a little bit different so now doing some plyometric push-ups really good for developing the explosive power in the chest and then racing sprints is the best way to develop acceleration overall great workouts it looks like a multiple workout routine it doesn't look like one day it looks like a couple days of workouts so i wouldn't structure it in the way that you probably saw in this video it's just probably a montage of multiple workouts overall really good and great for developing uh, athleticism for football or basketball youtube is going to recommend you this video or this video to jump higher and run faster so go ahead and click this video and uh improve your athleticism improve it all right cool bye